We are simply not good enough. A sad ending to the year 2023. For the first time in six times, we have lost our end of year game. What a poor display from Manchester United as we do end the year 2023. It is indeed a proper reflection of how our year has been. Ups and down. And indeed, the final game just gives us all that in one. Welcome to the United Hotspot. My name is Webb and here is the official match reaction of our loss to Nottingham Forest. I'll start off with the number one. The first observation I made in this game is that Anthony Dos Santos is not good enough. Not that this is a new observation, but I think it is confirmation of what we already know. In fact, if you ask me, and like I told you before the game, Ahmad Diallo looked sharper than Anthony Dos Santos in training before. I, I felt Ahmad Diallo came on and he actually looked a, a little better than Anthony, yet he has not been playing for the longest time. I feel like uh, Anthony and you know his impact at United is negligible. He's not he scored or contributed a single goal this season. What exactly? The, what value he's a forward? Uh, Eric Ten Hag was talking about the, uh, him uh, uh, about them at the end of the game and how they trained the whole week of how to run be in behind and you know attacking with energy. But we did not see anything like it. So what exactly do they train and how do, where do they implement it? So I thought for me. The first lesson in this game is Anthony is not good enough. And because of that, this is the reason why my number one lesson will make sense to you. Number four lesson we learned from this game. I felt uh, like Kobe Maino has, has, uh, is getting a little tired. He's only 18, really. The boy has really played a lot of games. But I felt like his energies, and imagine, even Eric Ten Hag, I think, made the same observation. That's why he probably substituted him off. But I felt like his energy was a little low. And when Kobe Maino is not there, I think there is a certain our game lacks something. Now it's okay for an 18-year-old to feel tired after playing several games, but then when he goes off, who comes in for him? I felt like we Scott McTominay did not really, uh, you, you know, match up to his levels. And you know, there are certain people who can feel like, for example, the second goal on the counter, even the first goal, probably could have been. Uh, partly blamed on uh, on 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 that. And so I I felt uh, for me there there is a there, there is a, a a small lack of depth a bit currently now. Of course we know that when injuries are off, when we knock off injuries, we would uh, perhaps sort a few of them. But I don't think Scott we have a, a, a proper backup for Kobe Maino when he gets there. So for me that's uh, number two that I observed in that game. Number three, we are not consistent in anything. Again, we are going back. We played certain good things. We did certain good things well against Aston Villa. Uh, we had patterns. We had energy. We had pace. We have completely lost it in the next game. And you're thinking why, especially in the first half. What exactly happened? Why didn't we build on from the second half we had against Aston Villa? But we went back even worse than the first half we had at Villa. Uh, at all, uh, against Bill at OT. So I feel there, there is no consistency and uh, that's that's a bit worrying. I don't know how a man, the manager has got to, to, to realize this consistency in this team, but uh, it's it's terrible. It looks so bad on us. Uh, the number uh, two thing that I think we learned from this game is that we actually need a prop, we, we desperately need a backup for Rasmus Hoyland. You clearly saw that Marcus Rashford does not enjoy himself playing the number nine. We know that coming from a number. Never mind him scoring, by the way. He has scored now in five of the last six end-of-year games. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a good record on him, but to what end? It doesn't, if it's not a win, it doesn't matter. But I feel like uh, without Rasmus Hoyland, I think first of all, it takes away a lot. We were a little slow in our attack because we had no decent target man. It slowed us down not having a natural number nine in Hoyland up there. We missed his hold-up play a bit. Uh, I felt like uh, we missed the threat going up top. That's why uh, uh, Nottingham Forest could ably and comfortably get us on a counter. So I feel like now, as well as Jan, we do seriously need a backup for us, Mas Hoyland. And I will give you a few of those names because this is the eve of the transfer window. So obviously, we should be starting those conversations. So I think uh, that is a, one important thing. We desperately need a backup for Hoyland. When he's out, we are not going to be playing like this with a false nine in a guy who does not want to play as a number nine. Now, the first and most layering important lesson that we learned from that game is that Mason Greenwood should be back in this team in this month of January. You clearly saw, and I started by telling you Anthony is not good enough. Imagine we are looking at now a boy, Ahmad Diallo, who has been injured. 
Now, if Hoyland is not there and you're going to have Marcus Rashford start as a number nine, so then who is going to be on the right wing? We saw that Rashford plays well on the left wing. We know that. And then Ganacho proved to us that he can play well from the right. But if Hoyland is not there and, Hoy and, and uh, Rashford is, has got to play as a number nine, then it means you've got to bring in uh, 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 Anthony Dos Santos. Yes, Ahmad Diallo is better, but Diallo just returned from a long injury. You cannot put all that weight on him. He has got to be introduced back into games. So clearly, clearly, guys, I think it is glaring now that as we go into this January transfer window, the biggest chant we should be making should be and uh, Mason Greenwood back, Greenwood back, Greenwood back. That should be the chant we are making because that game, the last game of the season, exposed our biggest weakness. Yet we have the solution on loan to Hetafe. We don't have the luxury to loan a player like Mason Greenwood. More so, we don't have uh, the audacity. We can't have the audacity to sell him to teams like Barcelona that are inquiring about him. So for me, those are the five obvious lessons we did learn from this game. From this loss when it comes to the player ratings and uh, these ones i'll just wrap them up because i think they are bad we do not have so many players put on great performances if anything our best performer of the day could have had a a, a 6.5 so for me the player team and all the performance from what we saw against us from Vida, this is a big dip in form we are below average all of us together the entire team i'll give it a 4 4.5 they are playing with less desire and less energy less conviction less uh, you know direction less confidence were they resting on their laurels eric ten Hag spoke after the game with confidence saying that we should win this one he expected a win is this the uh complacency he passed on to his players i think they get they got a little too carried away when we beat aston Villa, just like with the supporters and you can't blame with the supporters we are we should get carried away because I mean for us we are supporters we judge by based on what we see. But the players also seem to have got carried away. I saw Eric Ten Hag before the game speaking confidently that this is a game we are going to win. I saw Christian Eriksen after the game. We expected to win. Even Eriksen himself, uh, uh, rather, uh, Eric Ten Hag himself again saying, you know, they expected a win. So maybe that as well. There was a certain bit of complacency. And in the Premier League, you can't afford to be complacent. Not against a team like Nottingham Forest that I've been telling you. I reminded you of how it gave us a run. It nearly beat us in the first leg. But also, they have got a new coach. The new coach effect is always going to motivate players because players know we are going into a transfer window. If you don't perform for the new boss, probably he's going to be given a budget. Uh, no, no. He will sell you out. So they are more charged up and, 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 and psyched. So the confidence that we had, for me, maybe as well, played on in our heads and this game for me, we lost not because we were a poor team, not because they were a better team, but because I think for me, we are not in the right uh, space for the game. The Nottingham Forest are 15th. We, are, we end their seventh on the pile. They are not a better team than Man United. We, at least we saw if we, are, we go by the Aston Villa game. We are beating top three teams and Ericton Hart keeps bragging about it. But why are you losing games you should be winning? And that's what the Premier League is all about. Just collect points from the teams you should be beating. That's Eric Ten Hag has got to master the Premier League. You should you, you can lose to the top six, by the way. You can lose to Liverpool. No one will judge you for losing to Liverpool, Aston, uh, Arsenal, Man City. But you should be collect, beating the teams you should beat. These little small teams you should be beaten. Uh, they should be beaten and battered, by the way, because goals matter in the Premier League too. They should be obliterated. But the thing I've learned from Eric Ten Hag, I've observed, is, is he focuses more on the big teams and he somehow doesn't know how to motivate his players for the small teams but in the premier league in, the, in this, in this marathon of the premier league you need to beat teams you're supposed to beat if you're going to garner points the united hotspot subscribe my name is web the take home is bring greenwood back into this team